Verse 6. Okay, good morning. Um, if you are coming to see uh, SQL expert, this is not the right session. I'm, I'm not an expert myself of uh, MySQL, <coughs> and, uh, but I have been working with uh, MySQL experts in the past, uh, among which the people who have been writing the optimizer of MySQL. Uh, to optimize Community Builder for large sites. Um, we had a customer who was running a radio show in New York um, with a morning talk where they were presenting one lady, young lady, every morning. And when the uh, presenter was saying the URL where people could go and look at the profile of that lady and her friends <laughs> using Community Builder. You could count up to five seconds, and then you had thousands and tens of thousands of hits on that website at the same time. <laughs> and uh, even with the largest multiprocessor web server, the web server was going down. So it was very well known in New York that um, it was so crowded that the web service didn't sustain it. So they decided to cure that and contacted us and contacted and put us in relation also with the actual authors of MySQL. So in that process, we learned quite a lot. And um, I would like to bring a few of those simple ideas uh, in an understandable fashion here. So first thing that um, you need to understand if a slide is slow, if it's a PHP problem or a SQL problem. I'm going only to treat the SQL problems here. Um, and to illustrate that, um, Nick and me have been building a Juma 3.1.1 stress test site with lots of articles categories, half a million users, um, to see better where the problems are. If you have a small site, your database and your query doesn't matter <laughs> how it is written, because um, it's a small data set, so it's quickly queried whatever you, almost whatever you do. So you need to be able to do stress testing and testing if your queries are good or not you need to have la very large data sets. Uh, building such a data set is not easy. For instance, I tried to build lots of tags to, to test the new tags. And it works for copying or add mass adding 100 tags. But I wanted to add 100,000 tags. <laughs> so um, that the uh, Joomla didn't allow that. So uh, we had a script from Alien which did that. OK, um, before I go and do the practical work, um, I will explain a few things. And I think I broke the record set by no number yesterday. I have not three slides. I have zero slides. So we'll be doing it here. <laughs> He's not there. OK. Uh, any other? OK, great. Um, uh, also, one thing that is. Uh, good to know is that uh, MySQL has two database, main database engines. Um, one of them is MySAM and the other one is InnoDB. Uh, you probably know that uh, MySAM had this limitation of 64 kilobytes per row. Um, and for instance, if our charts were counting there. Um, I'm going now to more focus on InnoDB. And I'm going to focus to the more modern versions of MySQL 5.5, 5.6, mainly. And if you're going to do some optimizations and do testing, I recommend MySQL 5.6, which has quite some profiling, so quite some um, database perf uh, performance uh, queries that have been added. It also has quite a few very nice optimizations in the performance of the engine, InnoDB, uh, which 
make me believe that for economical reasons, uh, hosters will be picking up that faster than any other MySQL release <laughs> because they can have more sites per server, so it's an economical reason <laughs> there. Um, I also hope that today we'll be going to uh, save a few power plants and the planet a bit uh, because slow queries means more processing, means less sites per web server. And when we optimize that, we optimize also the power needed by each Joomla web page. Okay. Um, sorry? I think it's recording itself. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so a few very basics about a MySQL table and how things are. So this is more a beginner session than an expert session, as I said in the beginning. Um, so in a MySQL table, you usually have rows and you have columns. Sometimes you have a primary uh, key, an ID, which usually outer increments and usually is a number. It can be something else. And then you have other uh, integer, uh, text, bar chars, floats, and so on, types of uh, columns. Um, one big difference uh, from InnoDB compared to MySQL is that InnoDB will be storing the whole row in a cache uh, each time. So uh, to access data, it will be much faster. Um, I'm also going to concentrate on um, lower end servers, not on higher end servers, which have enough memory and the MySQL server is perfectly configured. <laughs> because that's most what most of the, the, the sites are using. It's just default configured MySQL database and just awful like, <laughs> like it's there. So basically, the, when everything is in memory, things go much better than uh, if there's not enough memory configured. But um, a service is well configured. You would have RAM, which matches all your tables that you're using usually, so that everything is memory and you don't have any disk accesses. But that's not the case, and uh, even worse, as the default number of open tables in MySQL is like 60, <laughs> so not, not even one Joomla site can have all its table open. means it closes some files to open other files. And um, that's just hitting the performance very much. The so that's, that's for the data. Then, uh, Concentrating now on uh, uh, InnoDB only. Um, each entry of the table uh, will be one entry in memory indexed by the primary key. key. Now, if our primary key is the ID, everything will be indexed by that ID. Um, and now, if you do a query, for instance, uh, select uh, star from that table where text equals ABC. What will be happening in reality is that as we are looking the where on the text column here, uh, we will be having the MySQL engine which will be scanning the whole table. So if you have one million rows, the processor will be scanning one million rows one after the other, to check which one has ABC. There is no magic there, just processing power. Even worse, if your table has one million rows, uh, taking uh, 200 megabytes, and your buffer in memory size is two megabytes, it will be reading all those tables. And um, you know, DB stores in something like 64, 8 or 64 megabytes chunks, uh, the, the row. So it will be each time reading again from the disk to get the next 
uh, set of rows. And that can be very slow. Um, so to, to, to optimize that, you can use indexes. And typically, if you create an index on your database on the text row, then what will be happening is that MySQL will be creating another table, which does a correspondence between text and the primary key. And that table will be sorted by the text here and will be not stored as a, like a stupid table like that, but it will be by default st uh, st uh, stored like uh, in a B tree fashion, which means that instead of have it having to scan this, it will be having uh, binary B sections. And then within just a few disk accesses or memory accesses, find the right entry which corresponds to that row. So we say, say where text equals ABC, it will be going, OK, uh, I come here. This is starting with A. This is starting with M. So I go here. I'm simplifying here. Um, this is so, uh, starting with uh, A. So I'm going here, here. And I find something which is uh, quite as the beginnings of the table. And that way, instead of scanning a million of row, it will be just doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven accesses. <laughs> but we're still doing that. And it will be doing at least two accesses if you have five or six entries only. Sometimes adding an index on a table that you know that it's very small can actually decrease your performance instead of increasing it. But if you don't know if your table can be small or large, it's better to add the index and um, do it that way. MySQL 5.6 has a, a, a new feature, um, which is that it can, in some cases, based on statistics that it does, cr out create some indexes itself, so that you don't have to tell it. But this happens on large databases with uh, a lot of accesses. And typically, if you want to do a, a, a test on a such a database and have those indexes created, you need to do a warm up of the database, like making queries for half an hour, one hour intensively, so that the database trains the accesses and has a time to create in background those uh, indexes. That's uh, very nice for big sites. It's also the future for, for web serv servers. Uh, but it's not the case today, and we still need those indexes. Another thing that is quite interesting and, and not well known is that uh, you can have indexes on multiple fields. Um, and typically, if I say uh, where text equals ABC and this integer equals 10 in you know, my query, then if I have an index on text and an index on int, uh, MySQL will not be combining by itself the two indexes like some databases do. But if they don't have a combined index, uh, it will be picking just one of the two and then doing a table scan for the other end of the where. <laughs> so if you want to have uh, ABC here and 10 there, and you want that row and not the others, where the A in front here, A text equals A, B, C, and A int equals 10. Um, it will be taking that index, and then if I have A, B, C here, and A, B, C there, but here I have 9, and here I have 12, it will be still scanning. So by doing combined index, uh, a text and a int, uh, it will be storing here, if I do it in that order here, a text and a int. It will be actually appending, roughly, a, b, c. I'm simplifying again, separator uh, and 10. And that will be the key 
in that table to get the primary key. And they will be appended in that order that you specify in the index. So typically, an index which is a text followed by a int is not the same than an index a int followed by a text. And each entry will be first sorted by the first key, and then by the second key, and then by the third, fourth, and so on. Now, those indexes are used, of course, for where statement. They can be used for group statements, and they can be used for order by. The other area where indexes can bring a lot is for sorting, So, as indexes are sorted. So if I select, for instance, star from a table and I do an order by a text, if I have an index a text, which is by definition already sorted, MySQL will be using the a text index automatically to um, to, to get the result. Now, what happens if you have where, group by, and order statements? Let's take a, a, a simple example. Uh, select star from my table x. Um, where uh, my a int is equal 11 and I order by a text. What will be happening is that if you ha happen to have an index which is a int and a text, MySQL will be able to use that index not only for finding the entry but also for sorting. So you will see that um, that entry will allow you to directly go to the right row or set of row in your result without having to scan for searching and without having to scan for sorting. And you, even if you have one million rows, that query will be zero point something milliseconds. <laughs> so really fast. Um, if here I have, for instance, uh, a int 11 and B, let's say, B uh, watcher equals uh, CD. Then this index will be not of real use, but it will be still be used because my SQL engine is able to use uh, the first part of the index. So for instance, it will be still using the a int part here and ignoring the rest. So you don't need to create an index for a int if you already have an index for a int, a text available. I, I see sometimes people creating a, an index for a int and then an index for a int so and then a, and that's just, uh, reducing the performance, usually, because uh, MySQL needs more time to find which of the indexes which start with a int it will be able to use. On number one, number two, it will be losing time to have more indexes in memory. And number three uh, is that um, you might have um, worse performance um, in some cases. In some cases, you will have better performance. Yeah? Can I ask uh, this uh, possibility to 
Yes. Four or three or something. It's it's very old. It's very old. <laughs> um, so that's a good tip. Now another another tip which is quite interesting is that as long as you have equalities, everything is quite easy there. Um, and uh, things get a bit more weird when you have, for instance, here b int and b int equals uh, greater than 100. Then what happens is that uh, the MySQL optimizer will be first <coughs> looking for the <coughs> equalities and then for the uh, bigger or smaller than, because that's like so, uh, sorting. <laughs> so typically, an index which works best there is an index which starts with a int and then with b int. But an index which has the other order around, it won't. It will be used only for this, and then it, you will be having a scan for that. So that's that's the best index for that case here. But as soon as you have something which is not an equality then uh, obviously it will be able to use the ordering of that one here. But if I order by a text and add an index for a text here, this one will not be able to be used because it's first sorted by this one and then sorted by that one. So if you do bigger than 100 here, then those which are remaining there are not sorted anymore. <laughs> so in your queries, um, Try to avoid like, for instance. Although in uh, MySQL 5.6, they can do something with that. Um, if you do like, try to avoid the percent at the beginning, because an index can still be used with like A, B, C percent for the for the uh, wild card, because it will be able to use if it has an A text index, it will be able to use the first part, the first letters. Um, next thing is, um, yeah. What happens if you have the primary card, not the A int, uh, you are now are, uh, using an equal statement. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you have queries that is, uh, and sometimes you are using a int greater than 10 and then b int equal than? Then you would need to have an index b int followed by a int. So typically, if you do both, you need to have both indexes. Now, those indexes are quite cheap when you read, but when you insert a row, they need to sort and insert at the right place into the B3 euro. <laughs> so um, they are more expensive at write. So depending on the column, if you have colon, uh, columns which are uh, rows that you read mostly, you're gaining performance by uh, adding a lot of indexes. If you're doing mostly writes <laughs> and read is just for the administrators doing statistics from time to time, then you'll be losing performance on your website <laughs> by adding indexes because each each write will be having, especially if you have large tables. And if, and if you are doing both? Now, if you're doing both, then you still should have the indexes because uh, the later versions of MySQL are able, especially 5.6, is able to do delayed sorting of the index. It, it will not be making your query res write query results slower. It will be just using the CPU and disks after your query to recreate, uh, to, uh, to update the indexes. That, that's, that's one of the news of 5.6. Uh, so we have seen where uh, order. Um, now if you have group somewhere, a group is uh, something that you should use only when really needed because it will killing, be killing your performance because it's something which is happening after the query. <laughs> After scrolling, it will be scanning and um, trying to group what needs to be grouped. 
And for scanning that and to group, for group, it needs to resort by your, your group orders. If you group by this and by that, and it needs to be resorting the whole query by that. Even if it doesn't have to sort because it's already sorted, it will still be sorting. So it'll be losing performance there. Um, but again, here in the post-processing, post uh, if you have a group by, it can in some cases use the indexes same like where or uh, order by. Okay. Uh, last thing that I want to explain here because we do before we do some practical uh, work is that um, joins. Okay, joins are fabulous and uh, allow to do all these relations. But um, they can be quite expensive depending on your query. If you imagine that you have a half a million rows on one table, and you have another table with one million rows, and you have joints where, for instance, category ID matches ID here. And you do a, a select of the whole table, and you need to match there. If you don't have any index, if you are doing the join on something which is not indexed here, for each row here, it will be doing a whole table scan there to find the corresponding ID. <laughs> so if you don't have a right index there, you will just going to kill, because that means half a million times one million here. So you have uh, 500 billions, if I'm right, or even worse, 500 trillions table scans here. <laughs> so when you do, do a join, join a table, join a table B on B dot ID equals A dot cat ID, be sure to have an index on that ID in the table B. And if you have an AND here, B dot text equals A dot text, be sure to have an index ID text there. But of course, if you have a primary key here, which is ID text, don't do it that way. Do it, uh, don't keep that ID that you have there, do a, an index on text followed by ID. Because then you don't need to have two indexes starting with ID. Okay. Um, now when it gets a bit worse is that, for instance, if you have something like b.lft um, smaller than a.lft, FT and B dot right bigger than A dot right, like we see those queries quite a lot in Joomla, then it's just awful. Because uh, it will be able to use one of the two, LFT maybe, as an index to try to find those relations. And it will be still be scanning everything that is smaller. And it will be still sc then scanning the whole table for everything which is right <laughs> here. So while those nested tables uh, look quite interesting uh, from a conceptual point of view, from an optimization point of view, they're not that great. Um, and here we can help uh, MySQL a bit by adding B dot ID smaller than A dot parent ID. Because we have usually much less layers, uh, levels <laughs> than uh, left and right. And that, that can, adding that can make use of uh, A dot ID uh, index and uh, lowers the number of rows that needs to be scanned. That's for join. When you have multiple joins, it's uh, not a big issue in itself, but you need to make sure that for each of the joins that you have, 
that you have uh, fully indexed the, the joining keys to be fast. Okay, this, that, yeah. Would it be better to have like one create one join small that returns to a key and then you get the create the key for another table? Or Sometimes yes. Or I have a clear structure in mind where you have uh, three tables, mm -hmm. the same three tables. You do a join. You, you can do, do a join with a, a variable of one table, mm -hmm. but you can also do a join with the index of another table, and then a join, a third join, with the index of the previous one, so that you you can have the three joins all with indexes or just uh, two joins or one join with, uh, without indexes? Do you have an idea? You, it's always better to have indexes. So it's always better. Indexes, not mine, it's just indexes won't be hurting you too much except when you insert uh, new rows or update rows. <laughs> okay. um, uh, another thing that sometimes is much better than join uh, is to have a subquery. Because, for instance, if you have a table of one million rows and you're interested in, the, in 10 rows, if you do a join, the join will happen uh, before the where. So it will be first joining millions of rows. And then you're going where, ah, I only need uh, those 50. And then I do a, a sort, and then I do a limit <laughs> of 10. So we'll be having a join of millions of rows just to get 10. When you do a subquery, uh, uh, you, you, do, you do typically, if, if your where is only on table A, and then you do the join, uh, typically, in some cases, with some MySQL versions, <laughs> you'll be winning a lot by doing a subquery instead of a join. And the latest one, they're trying to optimize and to get around those bad things, but uh, you will still be winning by subqueries in some cases. But there are tools to see which is better. And the only way to have is a big data set that you create and then try it and see which one is faster and which one is slower. But, so, sorry for the off topic. Uh -huh. uh, but with my, my square cache, it's really hard to compare. It's really yes, uh, you, 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 you can do a, add a no cache to your query. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they doesn't use a cache. That was the case with my ISM. With InnoDB, where the cache is not the keys, <laughs> but the cache is the table itself, uh, it will still be using that data cache. Um, so uh, it also depends what kind of sites you're looking at. If you're looking to optimize the very first query <laughs> of, the, of the site, because it's a very low traffic site, so the tables get closed and then they get reopened, it's not the same that if you have high traffic site on a dedicated server where the tables are already open, MySQL has been optimized, and everything is in memory. It's not the same job, but the high, high traffic site optimization will always benefit to the low traffic site. And I believe that uh, Joomla should be uh, paying for uh, a MySQL optimization engine expert. They cost like 300 uh, dollars per hour and more. <laughs> but it's a very, very well worth investment. And if you have an extension which is running on big sites, just get those experts. They are, they are um, uh, you can find them at MySQL, you can find them at uh, MariaDB, you can find them at Percona. Um, the original guys which did write the uh, MySQL uh, optimi optimizer, they are working at Percona. And they are doing consulting. Uh, you try to do session. Sorry. You need to invite them to a bug squash session. <laughs> I, I, I was I was pr proposing to Brian to, to, to get a guy from Percona instead of me here, <laughs> 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 but he wasn't really in budget um, here. Um, but certainly, that's something that we need to consider f uh, being paid by uh, the Joomla project. But we will be doing some exercise here. To, uh, we have still twenty minutes. Right? At least I think so, yeah. 
Okay. Um, we'll be doing some exercise here, and you will see that we don't need a really that expert first. We have some homework to do ourselves. <laughs> no, me, you. No, yeah, now, now you know the, all the basics. You, you know all the basics already. Yeah? Uh, yeah? What's your recommendation on nested sets? So the academic way to do that is left and right go, or like really just eyes. But uh, do you think that it's the correct way to do it from the performance side? Or is there a better way to do it to gain better performance? It depends what, less, it depends right? what yeah. result you want. It depend, really depends what results you want. Uh, typically, um, using the parent ID, in additionally to left right, can gain you a lot of performance. Because um, <coughs> with the parent ID, you can use the ID, and you can have a parent ID index followed by, for instance, a left index. So you only scan on right after that. <laughs> um, I have heard yesterday in the Berks Quest session that uh, the plan was to be able to support more, more than one root in a nested table. And for MySQL performance, that means that you cannot really use the parent ID anymore as direct. I think for the SQL performance, it's a catastrophe for large nests. So it sounds nice when you look from a PHP perspective, when you look from a MySQL perspective. And I'm not an expert here. I'm just learned a bit during the years and large sites. Um, we, we should really have a, a, a SQL expert which is reviewing each query and each change of query. You need some change management on the SQL query. <laughs> OK. Um, I think that that's pretty much for Terry, we'll be going back if we need some more things. Okay, um, so this is my stress testing site. Um, here I'm on the home page. I'm just going to refresh it. Okay, this has like uh, about 10,000 articles, about 4,000 categories, and it's loading pretty fast. Um, now if we go down here, we have database queries. Uh, to win some time today, I have added just a small uh, hack to the my SQL that I just insert the time that the query has taken <laughs> after the query. I think that's a welcome patch that we should be adding to the to the Joomla core because that will be helping you to spot uh, how many time how much time it has done. And on purpose, I have done it in milliseconds and not on seconds like PHP my admin does because it's you're really fighting for the milliseconds and fraction of millisecond here. OK, so let's see, for instance, the first one. You see that it's very fast. OK, we have very few sessions there. And if I go into PHP my admin and I see, look at the session table here, structure, OK, login again. I said login. session, structure, indexes. Okay, we have session ID here as an index. So that query, we are all okay with it. So session time, smaller than. We have a, an index of time. That's fine too. Now we go to extensions. Type equals component and element equals com user. What kind of index would you propose here to optimize that query? Type an element. Type an element, yeah, right. So let's go to extensions table. Uh, extensions is here. Structure. I said structure. Okay, refresh. Extension structure. Okay, we said extension and uh, element and type element. type element, right? 
uh, type element. Uh, we have here type element. So we are, and we have uh, followed by folder and ID. Uh, right now, actually, this, um, this index here look, look, looks like usable, right? But in practice, it won't be used here because MySQL will be determining that it has folder and client ID and it's a very long index <laughs> and, some, and it, it's not worth using it because the extension table is too short to being able to use it in practice. When I do and explain it, we'll be showing it. But uh, what you see here, type and element make it already unique. So folder and client ID, they shouldn't be there. You, don't, you shouldn't be adding things to an index that are not used because it's just making to make it longer. And here, if you have, for instance, on a text here, a varchar 255, it means that with UTF-8, it's three times 255, so it's 760 or something. That index will be 760 bytes long before you get to the next one. So you'll be having a huge index. And as longer your index is, the less indexes are stored by block. So the more disk accesses you will be having. So make your index as long as needed, but not longer, especially if they get unique. And use integers instead of strings. And use integers instead of strings and make your tables, uh, your, your var chars and so on, no longer than needed. 50, 50 characters var char for an element here is just stupid. Sorry, 32 or even 16 would be enough and the index would be shorter and faster. So typically, if somebody is here to write down a patch, remove folder and client ID from the extension index on the JOS extension table. Anyone, anybody here to write a tracker item for that? Okay, so next one, JOS extensions. Um, Enabled type plugin state greater than zero, access in, order by ordering. Who wants to design an index for that? So which one should we put first? Type. type. Yeah, we have an equal, so type is definitely the first one that we can put there. Next one. Enabled. Which one? Enabled. Enabled. Okay. State. Why state? Um, We could. Well, actually, we, it's more a, the a theoretical exercise because extension, you wouldn't have like more than 100 extension probably on yeah. your side. <laughs> but let's, let's do it uh, for, te for Terry because these are simple examples. Um, enabled, um, uh, certainly we can put it, but once we have enabled, you need to think that we have type, for instance, component in our table. We can be smarter than MySQL experts here because we know what's in the table and we know what what's never going to be the case. So my SQL expert, just showing him the query, he will be maybe doing a lot of indexes. Actually, the real expert will be asking to see your data first to see if it's, but. It's not that important, but let's, let's, let's do the exercise. You will be having component, you might have module, right? And then maybe plugin. And then enabled, you have either zero or one each time, okay? And then here for state, you have also, I think, zero or one, right? Each time or something like that, okay? Now, if the query says uh, enable, greater one, uh, enable, you may have two actually, I think, maybe, or minus one. I'm wondering why it's greater or equal than one, actually. Because maybe it has a two with archive, the archive state. Minus one, I think, is archive. Maybe it's archive. Well, I'm saying for us, that's, yeah. that's enabled here, but maybe it's 
Right. So if you remove the greater than here, then this works. <laughs> so the optimization here is not to add indexes. It's to remove the greater than one. You had assigned a table. Yeah. Because now the problem here is state is not usable here. Because we will be looking for component one, module one, plugin one, for instance. Uh, so if you say here type is plugin, we'll be looking for the one here. Okay. And for the one here, we'll be having, uh, well, let's well, uh, put the template here so that you understand better. We have zero and one and zero and one. We have, we are looking for the one here, but um, if you're looking for state greater or equals than zero, we'll be able to look here, but, um, but, but I wanted to tell something, but that in that case you might be right. In some cases, it will be not be able to use that one with uh, greater than each time. If you have a greater one, yeah, greater here, MySQL doesn't know if you don't have a 100 here, okay? If you might have a 100 here, then here you have again zero and one. So it will not, or, or it doesn't know if you have zero and one, you might have minus one and you might have plus two and so on. So it will not be able to use that index with two times greater than only with equality. Once you have equality, you have one more step in the index table, and then you're done. So yes, by removing the greater than here, we'll be gaining performance on that query you know, with, with large tables. OK, next one, languages. Published equals one, order by ordering. What's the, the best index for that one? Published followed by ordering, right? Okay. Language. Structure. Index. Okay. Language published ordering. So we don't have any published index here. We have an order index, but it won't be the order index here might still be used by MySQL because it sees that there's an order there. So it would be using the ordering index to access the table to have it already in an ordered state. But then it will be still scanning it to remove those which are not published. So by adding published ordering here, we will gaining some, uh, some a little bit because we have little languages usually. But it doesn't matter in this query. But it might matter a lot in a query where you have a join. Yeah, if you have joins, we have that in con content. Yeah. On content, we have join language. <laughs> yeah. So it will be winning for the join relation. OK, extension we have seen. Menu types, again here. Um, ah, that's a good one, actually. And it's half a millisecond. Um, Okay, we get from menu and we have extensions. So which index do we need here to have that running best? Uh, on menu, table. We need client ID, yeah. And then? Uh, sorry, client ID. Uh -huh. OK, don't forget the where are done first, with the equalities first. So you need to have first published, then client, or the other way around, and then only parent ID. Exactly, because that's the, it's always sorted. Um, so that, that, that might be working quite well, but actually another one which might work not bad at all is client ID published and left. Uh, 
The, on, the, on the join, you need to have the index not on component ID, but on extension ID here. Of the extensions table. <laughs> but that's a primary key, so we are OK. But uh, with my SQL uh, 5, if you have a foreign key here, <laughs> on component ID going to extension ID, you will be winning a bit of performance as well. Another thing which is important is the types of those two should be identical to have optimum performance. So if you have one unsigned find and one signed, it doesn't work? It works halfway with yeah, integer, halfway. halfway. You will not be able to do a foreign key because MySQL wants perfect identity of the two. But uh, if you have uh, an integer and a string here, like used to be the case in the ACL of Joomla 1.5, because it's not identical, it is not able to use your key. It will be do a full table scan because an uh, integer expressed as a text might have a different meaning. <laughs> so that's important here too. But I said that an index on published plus client plus left might be better here if you have a lot of rows on menus. Because um, sorting takes more resources. It's more processor intensive than a scan. A scan, you go once. A sort, you, you do a file sort, you resort, resort, resort. You do multiple scans. So it might be, you may be better off having an index on published, client, and left. And then let it go one pass through the table <coughs> to remove the uh, unpublished ones. Uh, another thing which um, makes me go back to the table there, um, sorting on large data sets we don't fit into the cache of MySQL makes a real file sort. Means it's doing, a f uh, it will be outputting the, ta the result to a file, it will be scanning through the file to sort. And that's very expensive. <laughs> so that's why it's better to, in case of doubt, to do the last index on this sort. Because when I MySQL will be using publish and client uh, index, your table is already sorted. It should be doing only one pass for sorting <laughs> and not multiple passes for sorting because it's already sorted. It doesn't know, but it's just doing it once. Okay? Um, so let's come to something more interesting here. So this is quite well running assets here. This left and right, I will be keeping it for a bit later. Although that's quite interesting query, actually. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, um, how would you exp optimize that one? What kind of indexes would you like there? With a we could do a subquery, although that's, that's one possibility. The other one is that you see that you have a group by b.id, b.rules, b.left. What effect does that has that group ID has on the result? Right. But it will be basically giving um, unique result based on b.id for each row, right? Yeah. And on b.rules. So th this one is, is, is useful. Uh, I will just now go to the last one to show you the tool since time is flying. Uh, now they have a big query for the content itself. Okay, it's taking 112 milliseconds. So this is one which is killing the page. <laughs> okay, so you don't, to illustrate, I have been doing the other queries to show the basics before going to that one. <laughs> but usually you should go through quickly to your queries and see which one is the qu quickest win on it, which one is taking the most time. And interestingly, okay, this is a, has a limit of 10 entries. And if you go further down, further down, oh, we have another query like that. It's exactly the same. Actually, I did the diff. <laughs> it's exactly the same, except one thing. There's no limit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this query is just awful. 
because it will be uh, loading 10,000 articles. Okay. Now this query is also strange because it does select on a, a content A, and then it does a group by A.ID and all of that. What's if hell? <laughs> A.ID is unique. All of the rest of the group by is completely unneeded. So if we do here, we copy that one. And we go to here and execute that SQL query. Okay, and let me just execute it a second time. So I get rid, uh, I guess I hit a small bug off. Here we go. Okay, um, if you have this profile check mark here checked, clicked, and then you will be having this nice graph and details of, of the query. I'm not sure if it's in 5.5 and 5.6 you have that. So we see that uh, creating the sort index <laughs> is what kills that query. And why does this sort index get created? If I, and it's taking 0 0.115, so the 115 milliseconds that we saw there, if I edit that query, and uh, I remove that group by, which is completely unneeded here, and I do a go again, okay, we have 150% on that query. The, your homepage is loading f two times faster. When you remove the second query, uh, which is completely unneeded, then your page loads four times faster. You get more, four times more websites on that server. You have saved a quarter of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's an easy, quick win that you today, as MySQL optimizing expert, uh, newbies like I am can do on Joomla <laughs> and on your extensions. Uh, so that's a very, very good tool. Uh, last thing that I want to show you because we are running out of time is the explains. Um, so let's say this one here. Okay, I'm, I'm taking that one just um, to do an explain on that. Okay, if I select that, I have the result here. Uh, then if I add explain in front of it, and with MySQL 5.6, I think, you can have a, an explain extend, extend that, I think. You will uh, have a table result here. What does that thing say? It says that the first table that is taken in account is the table M, which is the content item tags map. It's uh, taking all of them. We have 509 rows here in that case. We have 509 articles which have a tag. Possible keys. That's the keys that MySQL is thinking are possible to optimize that query, which are uh, actually the key which are available to, to optimize that query. Uh, but it's not using any of those. So if I open a new tab here and I go to just content item tag map, content item tag map, and I look at indexes, there are a lot of indexes here. Go back here. Uh, we have a where on type alias, single content table, content item ID, and published. But we don't have the corresponding index here. <laughs> so adding an index on uh, type alias, content ID, and published will be helping that. And T dot access in is something which is killing your query because it's not an equal, so it needs to be getting every one of those. But the in is interesting in cases like the one that we saw here uh, very quickly. Where the, you see that you have each time those. Each, each is taking half a millisecond, okay? But you have a lot of same queries. 
group them together and put that in, you will be winning the startup and, 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 and stop time. <laughs> and it will be just getting the, the same rows. OK, so if I go back to this one here. Uh, so if we add the key, we'll be seeing the key appearing here. And then here on T, which is the joint table, we see that it is using a primary key, <laughs> which is what we want, actually. OK, um, last thing is that I want to show you is that don't think that the backend is much better. Um, something which is awful, article manager, for instance. Well, two things which are awful here. Uh, look, I click on that article. One, two, three, four, oh, Now, let's see which one is, is killing us, OK? 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Wow! 3,000 milliseconds! Man, <laughs> just to get the categories. Oh my god. OK, let's uh, do a quick explain on that one. Explain me why that is so awful. <laughs> Ah, look, it's not looking, not using any key, not uh, using any index. Okay, that's first thing. Um, but before doing that, you should always not run on the explain, but just do the select and look at the table, or at the result of the profiling, which obviously is not here. I need to, this version has still a bug. Uh, ref hey, I want to refresh. Okay, again. Hopefully, we have the graph this time of the profiling. Why is this so slow? Well, we don't have it in, in graph form, but we don't see here. Is that the one without the limit? No, that one is with the limit. Milliseconds, milliseconds. There it is. OK, uh, very quickly, uh, group by a.id again here. So it's sorting this whole table by id at the end. Remove that. Still slow. OK, um, it's slow because it has 6,000 outputs here. But the query itself took 40 milliseconds only. So it's a data transfer, which is very slow because it takes all the categories to to build the drop-down list there. <laughs> but the query itself became fast by just by removing the group. And if I go to backend, another one which is quite interesting is a user manager. OK, one, two, three, four. Actually, I, I have fixed all this. <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, what happened here is something great. It's getting all the 500,000 users. So before calling an MISP, uh, MySQL expensive expert, let's fix those small quick winners that we are fully able after today to fix so ourselves without yeah. being big experts. But now I think we know more than the average PHP developer. Yeah. Right. And it's actually running the same query, returning all the, uh, uh, just uh, executing the query without any limit, mm -hmm. getting all the items, and then it just says, how many rows did I have? Right. Instead of say, asking count all items, and uh, by changing that, it's just two, three lines of code, you can make it very fast. Right. Uh, last tool that I want to show you, uh, go back to content. And I will do, I will take here 100 rows. Okay, I select them all. I do a batch thing here. I want to copy those 100 articles. Keep everything. I need a category. Let's put that into English content. 
process. Uh, this is long, let's see. You can do a show full process list command repeatedly. Do it while it's doing, while it's running. And you can sample which, okay, now it's finished. So we have a query, update draws assets, which is run a crazy number of time and which is not, which is not optimized there. So let's try to run it less <laughs> or at once. And to optimize it with those indexes we have seen before. And you will have much faster copies in Indrona. Usable copies, actually. <laughs> okay, so that's the last tool I wanted to show you. Uh, there is a lot of other things like the performance uh, table that is added in 5.6, which will allow you on a running website to see what queries are used the most, very useful. Try it out, try those things on your component and you will see large data sets you will be having a factor of thousand or m more performance optimization. Things will need to be snappy. If something is not snappy with MySQL, your query or your index is wrong. Thank you. <laughs>